This is block two of the Super Heavy. It's not the final version, but the first step in preparing Starship for a trip to Mars. It's still in the testing phase, but it's already about twice as powerful as the Saturn V, the famous rocket that took humans to the moon. Sounds crazy, right? But SpaceX is getting ready to launch something even bigger, the next-gen Super Heavy Block 4. They promise a major upgrade, not just in power, but also in technology and reliability. All thanks to exciting improvements we've never seen before. What's new in the next version of the booster called Next Gen? How is it different from Block 2? Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. Elon Musk is known for his unique way of thinking, especially in the way he designed Starship. While most companies try to get the design right before moving forward, Musk takes a different approach. He believes it's important to act quickly, try things early on, and improve as you go. Five years ago, he told Tim Dodd of Everyday Astronaut that if a design takes too long, it's not good, so the design needs to be changed to speed up the process. That's why, in his last live stream, Musk quickly showed off two new versions of Starship. The first he called the Next Gen Starship. The next version, after Block 2, is what we'll now call Block 3. This version reaches an impressive height of 124.4 meters when fully stacked. There's an even taller version, called the Future Starship, or Block 4, which will be 142 meters tall. Musk said this larger vehicle will likely be released next year. That's the complete two-stage vehicle we'll see in the future. In today's episode, we'll only look at one part of the stack, the Super Heavy Block 4 booster. What sets this version apart from the current Super Heavy booster? Let's take a look. One of the most noticeable changes to the Super Heavy Block 4 booster is its appearance. It's definitely taller. Elon Musk said the new booster design will increase the height from 71 meters to a whopping 81 meters. The added height comes primarily from longer fuel tanks which hold more fuel. Why? To help achieve larger goals, such as sending more than 200 tons into low Earth orbit or transporting building materials for a future lunar base. In Block 2, the booster carried about 3,400 tons of fuel, including 2,700 tons of liquid oxygen and 700 tons of methane. With the new 10-meter long tank, which adds about 22% more space inside, the Super Heavy Block 4 can now hold about 4,148 tons of fuel. This is more than just a bigger size. It's a significant step in improving how far the rockets can fly, how much they can carry, and how well they perform. Why is this important? Because when the rockets gradually separate about 90 kilometers above Earth, there's very little fuel left, usually only 10 to 15 percent. That's a daunting task, especially since the Super Heavy needs enough fuel to return and land safely. But here's the thing. SpaceX plans to reuse boosters and Starship to lower the cost of each launch to about 2 to 3 million dollars. Their goal is to reduce the cost of sending something into space to just $15 per kilogram. This is a significant jump from the $25,000 per kilogram price during the Apollo era. That's why choosing a larger size is a good idea. Larger vehicles use more fuel, carry more weight, and typically cost less per kilogram. They also make for safer landings, which helps the craft prepare for the next flight more quickly. The first Block 3 booster prototype, called B-18, is still being assembled. Its major parts have been delivered, and stacking work is progressing smoothly. Once completed, B-18 will be the first fully integrated Block 3 Super Heavy, combining all the latest features into a single vehicle. It also prepares for the first Block 4 boosters, which will arrive next year. Block 3 and Block 4 share the same design. The only difference is size. Furthermore, one of the biggest changes related to the Starship Block 4's larger fuel capacity is its engines, the Raptor 3. These are the most powerful rocket engines in the world. Elon Musk said that the new booster will have 33 Raptor engines, the same as before. Now, according to official SpaceX data, each Raptor 3 engine can produce an impressive 280 tons of thrust at sea level. That's a total of 9,240 tons of thrust required for liftoff. Absolutely insane. And that's just the beginning. SpaceX has suggested future upgrades that could increase the power of each engine and add more engines to the booster, allowing it to go even farther. Just to give you an idea, NASA's famous space shuttle, which carries parts of the ISS into space, only has five engines that together produce about 3,118 tons of thrust. This means the Super Heavy Block 4 is almost three times more powerful. Incredible. 
The Raptor 3 uses more fuel than the Raptor 2. It burns about 800 kilograms per second, while the Raptor 2 burns about 663.88 kilograms per second. That's to be expected given the 21.7% increase in thrust. But here's the surprise, it uses about 1% less fuel for every kilo of thrust. Furthermore, the Raptor 3 is lighter than previous models, reducing extra weight by 87%. This means there's more room for useful cargo or less fuel needed to reach orbit. This incredible power is what makes the Super Heavy the most powerful flying object ever built by humans. But it's not just about sheer muscle. The Raptor 3 brings a new way to simplify the design. Unlike previous versions, it eliminates many of the delicate and complex parts found in Raptor 1 and 2. This makes it more reliable, easier to maintain, and less likely to fail under pressure. In fact, the version 3 and 4 boosters no longer require engine shrouds for protection. This shows that SpaceX is becoming more confident in the durability of the Raptor 3. The Raptor 3 is still in testing, but will soon be fully integrated into the next generation Starship, and soon we'll see those engines come to life and soar through the skies. Now, let's move on. This is a major upgrade that SpaceX has never done before. Starship Block 4 will have a large transfer tube to help the Raptor 3 engines perform better. This is a major upgrade that was only announced two weeks ago. SpaceX designed this part to be nearly the same size as a Falcon 9 booster state. It's designed to send subcooled methane from the main tank to the 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster. SpaceX has officially stated what its purpose is. It's not only about the structure. This transfer tube is essential for the performance improvement seen in Block 3 and Block 4. The company says this new tube will help make flip moves faster and more reliable and let engines start at the same time. That flip has been a big focus for testing. In previous flights, especially Flight 9, SpaceX demonstrated better control during the flip by using engine thrust instead of just letting it fall and flip on its own like they did before. That was a really big step toward being more accurate and efficient. Improving this maneuver might need changes to the internal hardware, not just adjustments to the hot staging ring. That's where the new transfer tube is important. It might help the booster spin faster, use less fuel, and steer more reliably while coming down. This upgrade is important not only for how it helps start the engine, but also because it allows all engines to start at the same time. This makes launches more stable, boost back burns more reliable, and landings safer. If the engine fails, the system is important for quickly adjusting the thrust to keep control and protect the vehicle. In summary, this new transfer system is a big improvement in reliability and performance. It will help the bigger tanks get Starship ready for tougher missions coming up. Okay, it seems we have already mentioned three big improvements. Now it's time for the fourth one. It may not be the biggest one, but it's still quite important. The hot staging ring was first used in Flight 2. This part was added to make it easier to separate the stages and to reduce damage to the ship's engines and the booster's dome. So far, it has done a good job. But that doesn't mean it's flawless. One of the main problems is extra weight. Because the hot staging ring makes the vehicle heavier, SpaceX has to get rid of it after using it. This makes things more complicated, especially since they once had to rent a ship to get this huge ring from the ocean floor. Not the best. Moreover, the current venting system is considered not good enough. Its small size can cause extra pressure on the engines when starting up. SpaceX chose to change this part in an unexpected way. The new design is built into the booster instead of being a separate ring. This makes it lighter and allows it to be reused completely. It also simplifies the assembly and repair process by eliminating the need for a separate installation step. It's designed to be lightweight so it won't affect the performance of the booster. It now gives more space for exhaust gases to get out. This helps control heat and pressure better and reduces damage to both parts. The new hot staging ring is longer, which gives better protection to the upper booster parts, such as the grid fins. Now we can clearly see the Raptor 3 engines through the new ring design. This system represents a major improvement in efficiency, reliability, and ease of production. The best part is that we've already seen it on the B-18 booster at Star Factory. We'll likely see it in action soon, perhaps during the 12th flight, which is expected in September or early October. Finally, the fifth major improvement in Starship development concerns the grid fins. The grid fins, a distinctive waffle-shaped metal structure, are crucial for helping the Super Heavy booster control its descent. In early 2025, 
SpaceX held a Starship briefing and announced several key changes. These changes are significant for both the appearance of Starship and how it operates. The first and most obvious change is their location. The grid fins on the next-gen booster have been moved down about 80 centimeters compared to the current Block 2 design, so they are now closer to the methane tanks. This positioning change isn't random. It puts the fins in a more stable airflow during low-speed landings. But that's not all. SpaceX is reducing the number of fins from 4 to 3. They will now be arranged at a 90, 90, 180 degree angle, rather than being evenly spaced. Initially, this raised concerns about how well the craft would fly. However, research has shown that this uneven arrangement can actually aid control by disrupting balance and creating a slight weight difference. Three fins are still sufficient for somersaults and a safe descent stop. Fewer fins mean less weight. That's no easy feat for boosters that weigh many tons. Since SpaceX produces hundreds of boosters each year, saving one fin on each vehicle can result in significant improvements in speed and ease of manufacture. In short, these new grid fins are more than just an upgrade. They represent a planned upgrade to improve control, efficiency, and reusability for the entire mission. Here are five major improvements for the next-gen Super Heavy. That's it for today's episode. See you next time.